Okay, so the way that Western swords are sharpened, and I'm not 100% sure that it was done this way historically, though I'm pretty sure based on what I see in museums, but the way that they're sharpened today, right, is that you have what's called a foundation bevel, right, and then you have a edge bevel, okay? Now when people talk about things like, is it an apple seed edge, blah, blah, Apple seed edge is not that little tiny thing. The apple seed edge is the profile of the blade, right? Whether or not the blade is an apple seed edge is not up to you. It's up to the person who makes the sword, right? So don't worry about that stuff. What you need to make an apple seed edge is know-how and a slack belt grinder, which this actually is. Um, slack belt grinder, the grind that we're going to start with is... Forty. Okay, good. So a slack belt grinder means that when you put the belts on the grinder, the belt has slack to it, right? You don't need a whole lot. Like you don't need to. It's like you know this much is sufficient. Just so that when you push it against it, if it has a round shape, right, it's not going to force it into a square shape. It'll flow over the round shape, right? So again, this is this applies to modern swords, and I can't be certain of anything historical. If you want to know how historical swords were sharpened, contact Peter Johnson. Okay. So the first thing you need to do when you sharpen a sword is either create or figure out um, the foundation bevel. So the easiest thing to do is just to assume that all swords are sharpened with 40 degree edges, okay? Which they're not, but you can assume it, right? Um, 40 degrees means that it's 20 degrees on one side, 20 degrees on the other. So this is a 20 degree angle guide, okay? So that's 20 degrees, right? 40 degrees would be like that, right? Okay. So this um, is not. An, uh, an absolute angle guide, meaning you don't lay the sword in this and move it back and forth. The object here is to teach you how to judge these angles with your eyes. So that, that's what we're, we're uh, working towards. Um, Josh actually came up with a way to attach it here, right, so that you actually can just lay the freaking sword in there and just slide it in and out and then out. And he'll show you that later if you want to see. So if you have no interest in learning how to judge these things with your eye, you can come up with something like that. Um, so I'm an engineer, not a technician. What you do um, to figure out a sword's edge bevel is you take uh, a 2,000 grit belt, or if you don't have that, like the highest grit you have, you lay it on a 40 degree angle guide, and you run it down the grinder, and you look to see what it does to the edge. Ideally, what you want to see is a narrow, one millimeter shiny line that goes all the way to the edge. Right? Okay? Uh, if it doesn't go all the way to the edge, or if uh, it's just a weird place, or something weird is going on, then you don't have a 40 degree edge, and you've got to either figure out what the edge bevel is and, and sharpen to that angle, or what I prefer to do is say, fuck it, throw on an 80 grit belt and put a 40 degree edge bevel on the sword. Okay? Now, older Albions all had perfect 40 degree edge bevels. All of them. I've, I've got, well, all of them that I've sharpened. Right? I've got my original Brushes Padone, which is like one of the first 10 ever made. Right? I've got a Tritonia from the olden days. I've had um, other old ones, another brush I've had. I've sharpened like maybe a dozen older albums. They all had perfect 40 degree bevels. The new ones, yeah, yeah. sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes on one side, sometimes on the other. Get it together. Okay. <laughs> so, um, now, if you doesn't have a 40 degree bevel, you have to create one. You might have, you know, like uh, something that doesn't look fantastic, um, but it'll work great, right? So we're going to assume that you're just going to put a 40 degree bevel on a sword because it should have it to begin with, all right? So what do you do? It's very simple. You start with your coarsest grit belt, which if the sword is already kind of sharp and has a, a, a close to a 40 degree bevel, 240 is good. Um, if it, if do, going to 240 doesn't do anything, right, then you want to start with 80. You never want to really go lower than 80. And one of the things you have to check for all the time is that the belt is tight, because if it's not, you'll actually ruin the finish on your sword. So this is reasonably tight. This this belt grinder has this uh, adjustment knob, so now it's a little a little bit tighter. Okay. If you make it too tight, it's gonna like it's gonna struggle. I probably can't hear it, but I can feel it. So it, it's struggling to pull it, right? So you know, nice and tight. Um, so now what you want to do is you start on one side of the sword, right? And it helps to remember which edge is which, only for like when you test this and you find that one is dull and one is sharp, so you gotta start over on one but not the other. So what I usually do is I look for the maker's mark, and so like this is the right edge and this is the left edge. So what, what's important here, right, is that you, um, you're holding the blade with your hand. All right, and usually I just sharpen to about here because, you know, who the hell cuts with this? I mean, if you want to be like totally historical and awesome, you'll sharpen all the way up, but you don't need to. What you do is you lay the sword onto the block like this, right? And then, using your, not your hands, because you see when you move your hands, see what happens? Right? But when you move your body, 
the edge angle stays consistent. So what you do is you move your body and you go back and forth. It's very rhythmic and soothing. Like you could listen to music and stuff like that while you're doing it. All right. Um, so you put it on here and then you take it off. You see when you, when you take it off, you're maintaining. Sorry, you're visually maintaining that angle. So this this is like what does the angle look like, right? This is what it looks like. So if you ever lose it, right, you're like, oh shit, where was I? You put it back on here, all right, and okay, that's it, and then you will go back here. And eventually you're not going to need this. So this is the, in this way you're teaching yourself the correct angle. Back on the angle guys. Something to keep in mind is that on a lot of swords, the angle changes near the point. Right? Um, so if you continue, you're going to really drastically change what the point looks like. One thing to do is you can just stop about here, and that really won't affect your cutting. Um, if you really want to get crazy about it, sharpen the point separately using a different angle. Now, I'm done on this side. I either flip the grinder around or walk around to the other side. Normally, I make multiple passes, but this one is already most of sharp. A lot of you just cut with it. So now that I've done with this one, all right, I'll go from 240 to, this to let's say 400. Now, in theory, you could start with the 2,000 grit belt. The only thing, that, there's two things that the different grit belts do differently. One is they cut faster or slower, and the other is the, the cuts they make are smaller or larger, right? So the larger grit belts cut faster. So if you started with a 2,000 grit belt, it would take you like five hours, or well, not really, but a long time, right? And you'd wear out your belt. So that's why you start with. This is 400. Okay. That's why you start out with the um, the larger grits, and then you go to the finer and finer grits. Now the, the good belts to use are 3M Trizac belts. They're aluminum oxide belts, and the reason they're great is they're designed in such a way that as the uh, abrasive is removed from the belt, it exposes new abrasive. Like if you look at it in our microscope, it's it's a pyramid. Okay. The same thing. Actually, let me show you a different one. So, let's say you can't walk around. Let's say you're in your house. You don't have tons of room, and you put this on your kitchen counter. You can put this on anything, right? Uh, kitchen table is what I started putting it on first. So then you just turn the grinder around, right? you want to start testing it with paper, um, like regular copy paper. It should roughly slice the paper at 400, right? If it doesn't, go back. Either go back to the 240 because you did something wrong, or do a few more passes on the 400. Okay, um, now we'll go to 800. I get the fine the more I go up in, in grit um, the longer I spend on the belts because the less it's cutting off and uh, the 
you know, the more it benefits from increased polishing. Because at, at some point you're no longer cutting your, well, I mean, it's really the same thing, but you're polishing, right? The, the 800 grit is, is like a mirror finish belt. 2000 grit is like a super mirror finish belt. You can get a really shiny, like I think um, Albion finish is 240 grit or thereabouts, and on top of that is the Scotch Bright. So with 240, you can get a decent, like, you know, not that shiny, but nice looking finish. So this is, this is a polishing belt already. If I flip it, and if you don't remember if you flip it, just flip it. You know, just, you know not, nothing to lose. And since we have limited space here, like some people might in their house, I'll just flip the, the grinder around. Does anyone have any questions about what I'm doing so far? No. When because you mentioned the, uh, those particular belts being polishing belts, does it mean that you could literally use them just to polish the sword if you wanted to? Well, yeah, but it would polish like this way along the blade, and that would look like shit. But if you could somehow get the sword like that on the belt, which you can't, then yes. And this same grit could be used to polish the sword. The <coughs> foot's hanging off the grinder. So. No! Oh. Alrighty. So I finished 800 grit on both sides, and 800 grit should be pretty sharp. Like if you get a factory sharpened sword from most places, they're they're lower than 800 grit. So, okay. And you have to test both edges. Okay. So that means you're doing well at this point. Now let's say it didn't do that, or it did it on one side but not the other. I either have to spend more time on this if it's a little problem, like let's say one side is a little rougher than the other, maybe, or if it's it's completely dull, it's just not doing it, like it's, it's right. Then that's it, I've screwed up, right? I've made a mistake somewhere. Um, if it's just one edge, I go back to the beginning with that edge. If not, um, if it's both edges, I go back to the beginning. And, and, but first I have to realize, what have I done wrong? Because if I'm at 800 grit and it's just not working, I've done something really bad, right? I've probably screwed something up or whatever, and I have to either regrind the bevel, or I'm just maybe, maybe, um, maybe the, the sword was much duller than I thought, and look at the edge, and if you can see like a wide edge, then you've got to really go back to the first belt and just make sure that, that that is gone. You should see like basically no edge. The edge should disappear. It should be dark. You, you should see brightness when you like look at it in the light. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. okay. So we've done um, 800 and it's good. So now we want to go to, um, I can say to 2000. You can go to 1000 if you want. You can um, go to uh, 1200 or whatever you have. If you go to 2000, you can't just make a couple of passes. You know, you've got to stay longer. Now, um, at the 2000 grit, or about that level, you stop the paper test because it won't work. And the reason it won't work is the edge is folded over. Because you're shaving these tiny little, tiny little things, right? And the edge becomes very fine. And it's just got this, it's not the edge itself that's folded over, it's got these little chunks of stuff on it, right? Um, from 2000, you go to leather. Once you do leather, it basically clears out all that crap that's attached to it. Uh, and then, then you actually how thick of leather. Uh, oh, it's, uh, they sell a foot. What? <coughs> That's it. That's it. <coughs> they sell a 1x30 uh, leather belt. I mean, you could like take your leather belt, as long as it's real leather, and you know, step on the belt and just drop it on the belt, but that'll take forever. Okay. with a 2,000 grit belt because you're not going to like cut too much. If I go really slow like this with an 80 grit belt, I can screw some stuff up. It's really hard
have to ruin your bar with a 2,000 gram belt. Like, you have to try really hard. And you gotta wake up pretty early in the morning. But, test at this point. Actually, I'll show you. It may work or it may not. Before I figured this out, it was so frustrating because I would get to the 2000 grit and it would be like, oh, actually it worked. Okay, so this one, maybe it's seasoned. All right, never mind. But though it won't always do that because there will be debris sometimes. And I had, I like went back like all these steps and I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? So I actually looked at the edge with like a loop. I was like, oh. And even this one, like it worked, but it wasn't as cutting as smoothly as it should. You can use the beer bottle to wait the paper down so it doesn't. So, where is it? So this is um, leather, right? It's it's one by thirty, same belt. It's like fifteen bucks from uh, uh, who sells it? Lee Valley. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, those guys. Do you have a budget compound on it? Yeah. This is um, uh, metal glove, but it's really old metal glove that I put in here like two years ago. So you don't you don't really need it, but it helps. This is still a 40 degree edge, right? If I had left this at, uh, I don't know, 400 grit, it would still be sharp. It wouldn't be this sharp. It wouldn't be shaped any differently, right? Same angles. You saw it, right? I didn't change the angles. Okay. What's happening is it's fine. It, the polish is finer. So if you look at the actual edge, instead of it looking like a like a nasty rock face, right? It looks like a smoother, more more fine edge, and that cuts better, bites better at a microscopic level. Okay. Same strength. Will this dull faster than a 400 grit edge? Sure, it'll dull to the 400 grit level faster than the 400 weight strength. Okay? Mm -hmm. gotcha. So get your grinders and have at it. Okay. Right, um, any questions? How much pressure are you applying to the belt? Okay. So about like that. All right. You don't want to be like, uh, because then it'll like wrap around the edge. And it wraps around the edge, it'll actually erase the edge that you're working on. Okay. So just so, like you see the belt, right? Um, this is leather, but it's the same thing. You, you put it on it until you see it start to deform a little bit, right? And that, that's, that's, uh, that's how you know. Um, again, you, you want to check that tightness. That's very important. Before I learned that, I actually ruined the sword. Well, I mean, I fixed it with a lot of work, but the, there were like lines this freaking long on the side of the blade. And I was like, ah, it wasn't even my sword. Although I later won that same sword in that cutting tournament. 
<laughs> so I was like, phew! I was like, I can't lose, I can't lose, because I gotta win the sword. Um, but, uh, so, um, check the tightness, right? Started around 240. If that's not doing it for you, like you see the edge is still wide, go lower, uh, be consistent, use your body, right? But basically it's so simple that a caveman could do it. Like I've taught people this over the phone. That's I've taught people this on, on Facebook. Okay. Can I feel the same <laughs> pressure? Okay. Very light. Yeah, yeah. Just enough to make the belt deform, just a teeny bit. Okay. Basically you gotta know you're touching it, right? Yeah. Because if you know if, if the pressure is too light, the belt's not making contact. So you touch it to the belt, the belt starts to move, you're done. Hmm. Where can we set the grinders up at? On the angle guide. Hmm? Uh, yes. On the angle guide. Or you, you've got kind of a, oh, yeah, yeah. a diamond, basically. Are you trying to match mm -hmm. one oh, edge the of the diamond? No, because if you, if you do one edge of the diamond, especially on some swords, right, mm -hmm. then it's like this, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a completely different angle. You want it because, like you see, you can see, you know, where it's pretty much level. The the whole point is for you to be consistent. Like if you're at 42 degrees, oh my God, the end of the world. Or no, it's, it's your edge will be a little different. If you're at like 65 degrees, then you've got problems. Any more questions? It's very simple, right? Now you all know how to sharpen swords. Yeah, nice. What's the uh, special trick to doing the, the tip? Uh, well, uh, okay. So if you want to do the tip. Um, You do it like this, and so you get the grinder, and so you look at it, right, and you see where, um, like what you could do is run the 2000 grit over it, because again, 2000 grit can be erased with scotch Bright in seconds, and that's what Albion uses to finish their swords, scotch Bright. I think arms and armor, if they don't use it, it's close enough that it, you won't notice the difference. Um, so then you, so let's say this is your 40 degrees, and you just turn it a little more like that, and then you keep turning it until you get to that point, like that, or you could do it by hand. So, you know, you've got hand stones and you just... Are you using the same angle? What do you mean? Gorgeous one. The same oh, gorgeous yes. angle? You could, but then, like, Pretty here, cool. I've, I did that on this one before, and see, the bevel gets wider. And then this one, it's not that bad, but on some swords, like, it'll get, like, really wide, and you're like, whoa, what do I do? Especially if it's someone else's sword, and you're like, shit, I'm in trouble. Okay, where's, um, Tristan? He needs to oil this, because it got wet. Okay, one important thing I forgot to cover. If your edge sucks, like the sword you were asking about, right? You know it sucks, it's crap, you know, some idiot ground it on, and it's just terrible. You will have to grind a new bevel. You don't grind a 40 degree bevel on it, right? What you do is you grind a 30 degree bevel on it, or, you know, a, a 35, whatever, something less than 40. And then you sharpen that at 40 degrees. So what happens is, you know, you've got a bevel like this, and then you're putting an edge like that on it. Otherwise, when you sharpen it, you're going to, you know, basically sharpen the whole thing. Will that work? Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, but it'll take you longer and you'll be eating away sword thickness. So it's kind of like, especially with, if you do that with a slack belt grinder, it'll have kind of like a micro apple seed action going on there. Where you've got that bevel and then a rounded little... Okay, that's it. Awesome. Thank you.